Welcome to this week's how to. I have got some rhubarb that I've picked from the garden, my first pickings of rhubarb, and I'm going to share with you how I make rhubarb and ginger gin. I'm not a big drinker, but occasionally I like a little a little something, and this is utterly des delicious. I picked the rhubarb yesterday, so <laughs> the leaves are a little bit wilted, but it'll be absolutely fine. I have got a bowl and my scales. I've got a good hunk of ginger. I haven't washed the rhubarb yet. I'm actually just going to chop it up. In fact, let's put, let's use this colander straight on the scales and I'm just actually going to chop it all first before I weigh it out. Now I, when I pick rhubarb, it's better to snap it off. Sometimes you can't get right in to the plant and you might need to use a knife, but um, snapping is far better for regrowth. So I shall just, in fact, I'm gonna chop it all first before I put it in my scales because they will turn off. I want to use the pinker, the rhubarb, and you can use that end bit, there's loads of flavour in there. So I'll just take off any yucky bits. Um, it doesn't matter what size chunks you chop it into, it can be um, really, really whatever. But I'm really pleased with this rhubarb. I don't force my rhubarb. I would love to find a vintage forcer. Um, that is something that I'm going to be hunting for this year. But you really want your rhubarb plant to be well established before you think of forcing it. So bear that in mind. If it's a new plant, you don't want to force it for the first few years. This rhubarb plant is well established. I could absolutely force it now. Um, and I'd love to try. I'm just going to peel off that kind of rutty bit, but use the end. I find um, rhubarb is so versatile and I'm trying to use the pinker bits, but it doesn't matter if you have a bit of green rhubarb in there. I have just had scale malfunction. My other scales aren't working so I'm, <laughs> luckily I've got backup. Um, this is just an old pair of salted ones. So I'm just weighing out my rhubarb. I've actually got 450 grams. Ideally I'd have 500 but um, this is all I had to pick yesterday. So I'm just going to give this a good rinse and wash off any um, bits of soil and things that are on it. But there it is. Look at that colour. I just think it's amazing. Right, rhubarb all washed, and I've got a kilner jar with a um, preserving lid. And I'm just going to pop all of my washed rhubarb into my jar, like this. Um, that's Florence. <laughs> she's upstairs in our bedroom, and I don't know why she's barking. I have got Maud's asleep. Um, over by the fire, that's her favourite spot. And I've got Penny and Tess um, by my feet here. And naughty Florence upstairs barking at goodness knows what. It's very rarely a quiet house here. Right, in fact, I think 450 grams of rhubarb is about perfect. I don't think I'd get any more in here. So there we are. Now, um, oh, here you are. You've come down before Miss Barky. I've got some ginger. Ginger's totally optional, but I actually think ginger and rhubarb work really, really well together. And I need to get a teaspoon. You don't have to peel your ginger, but this is how you do it, using the back of a spoon 
It's a bit of a fiddle and it's better to do it on the chopping board. Just scrape off. I don't know if you can see. Um, and just scrape that off. Um, and that is the best way to get the skin off your ginger. Like this. I'm going to bring you up close so you can see me doing it. So just using the edge of your spoon, just scrape. And it does not need to be perfect at all. But if I chop that, it will be easier. There we are. And I'm just going to chop that into a few smallish bits and pop that in my jar here with the rhubarb like so. And then I'm going to use granulated sugar because it's less likely to go cloudy if you use granulated sugar. So I'm going to pop that onto my scales Thank goodness, I have backup scales. I have got my old-fashioned scales above the arga there. And I'm just going to add in 80 grams of granulated sugar and pour that in. I'm trying to not sprinkle it everywhere. There we are. Right, and now I'm just going to add the lid like so. Give it a shake and leave it for 48 hours. Don't do anything for 48 hours. Just leave it. Occasionally give it a little shake, but um, you don't want to over shake it because that can make it go cloudy as well. So I'm just going to leave that to one side to let the sugar do its thing with the rhubarb before we add in the gin. So I will be back with you in about 48 hours for the next step. This has been doing its thing <laughs> for 48 hours. You can see that the rhubarb has um, shrunk. <laughs> I don't know what the word is. Um, the sugar has all completely dissolved. There's a little bit of a fizz when I open it. And it's smelling pretty good. So uh, it's time to add the gin. I'm using Gordon's, just I mean, any, any gin will do. And I'm just going to fill the jar right to the top. Well, I mean, not too, too close to the top. You don't want it overflowing. But I'm just going to fill that up with gin. To there. And pop the lid back on and just give it a little bit of a and occasionally I'm just going to do that with it over the next three weeks so this is a patience game the most frustrating thing is you've got to wait about three weeks so really important that you put the date on it so I'm just going to um tear off a sticky label and just write today's date and stick that on my jar so I know um let's just put it on there so I know when I can um get it ready for drinking. So I'm just going to talk you through that process now so you can crack on and make yours. So I have got a plastic jug. I find it easier with a jug. I've got a sieve and I actually use a muslin. This is clean although it doesn't look it. It was one of the children's and I use it for making quince and jam and things like that. So it's a, ba a baby's muslin. You don't need to use a special muslin. And then take the lid off 
and pour carefully everything into your sieve uh, with your muslin. You don't have to use the muslin as well. I do because I just want to make sure that it's there's no rhubarb or anything that will go through. This is quite a fine mesh sieve, but I just I go with the double, the double whammy. And then because we poured it straight into a jug, it's much easier to bottle from there. And then I have got, where are you? At the back here. These glass bottles or something. And I just then pour it using a funnel, which I have here. I just pour it from my jug. Just imagine that this is full of rhubarb. Pour it in and then pop the lid on. And then these make wonderful gifts as well. So you could, you know, put a sticky label, homemade label or something on there, or um, you could just use, you know, like a brown luggage label and um, you can get some wonderful stamps, you know, homemade from whoever's kitchen. Um, or homemade gin or just write on it. You don't even need to go to the expense of a stamp, just write on it and give that to somebody. It's a really, really lovely present if they are a gin drinker. But the rhubarb in this with a little bit of ginger is just so utterly delicious. So I hope that that has inspired you to, um, to give rhubarb and ginger gin a go. Obviously, the ginger is totally optional, but I just think it adds a uh, je ne sais quoi to, um, to, to the flavour. I've also decided that I'm going to give forcing rhubarb a go. So um, we're going to go and do that. Well, hopefully we're going to go and do that. I need to go and buy something first in order to go and do that. So fingers crossed I can get what I need and then we can um, have, have a go at forcing rhubarb. And again, that's going to take a little bit of time. But in my weekly vlogs, I can update you as to how we're getting on. I had a successful mission and I have picked up a galvanised bin. It has actually got a lid, but we're not going to be using the lid. I need to store the lid um, in the hay barn and use that for another purpose with the bin when I'm not forcing rhubarb. Now I talked to you at the beginning about the fact that I haven't got any forced rhubarb and I've been thinking about it. I've done a little bit of research and the rhubarb plant that I picked the rhubarb for my gin is a bit of an awkward place. And I'll take you up there and I'll show you. It's a bit of an awkward place to put a forcer over. I would ideally love beautiful antique forces, but they are jolly expensive. And actually, a galvanised bin. I've gone with galvanised rather than plastic. A bit more expensive. However, there's method in my madness. Um, a bit weightier, so less likely to get blown off. And I can use it for other things like storing horse feed or things like that in the metal bin when I'm not using it to force rhubarb. And I was thinking about the rhubarb that's up in the kitchen garden, which I'm going to show you now. Um, and it's actually been in there for a good few years. So I think we can try forcing it. So I thought, do you know what? Why not have a go? We've done this and let's see um, how we get on. It takes about eight weeks to force the rhubarb. So I will have to update you um, and let you know how we get on. But I thought we would go up there and, um, and give it a go. Now, one thing that I should have mentioned right at the beginning is, our, is the fact that the rhubarb leaves are poisonous. So you need to be careful um, with you know animals and children and things like that because they are poisonous. So I should have told you that at the beginning, but I'm telling you um, that now I forgot. I forgot to mention it. Sometimes I get a bit overexcited and forget things and then think, oh, I wish I told you. Anyway, I have just also treated myself to a new pair of gloves. So we're going to put these on. We're, well, I'm going to actually put my full waterproofs on because it's so unbelievably miserable out there that I'm going to put waterproof trousers and the whole lot on. So I'm going to get all my kit on and um, head outside. Right. I'm up here with my galvanised bin. 
voila. And I'm just going to put some straw into the bin to take out to the kitchen garden. So I think we'll just pop one slice of straw in and off we go. The main man in his stable, Cassie over there, and I'm just going to show you the rhubarb that I'm not going to force. So this is my well-established rhubarb, but you can see it's the back of the greenhouse, and there's not very much space to put the galvanised bin in. And actually, this is really well established. This has probably been here for, gosh, I'm reckon six years, and so it's already got going. But we are going over. To the kitchen garden to um, try and force that rhubarb. The kitchen garden is looking rather bleak at the moment. I have got those bags of compost to put out here and I think that's going to be a job for one of the children. I'm going to pay them to do that but I've got two rhubarb plants there and I've also got two rhubarb plants over here and I thought that we would force one of them. So this is a rhubarb plant that I have decided to have a go at forcing. I have just put some new compost from one of those bags into here and I'm gonna put that around the base and then I'm gonna put some straw around and a bin on top. I haven't got my tripod up here stupidly, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to show you what I'm doing in action, but I will show you when I finished. So I've got a makeshift tripod going on and I'm just going to put this compost around here. It's quite important to feed your rhubarb so it's got nutrients going to it when you are forcing it, which is why I'm putting this fresh compost around the plant. <laughs> I had extra compost and I've just given that some too. And now for the straw. And now I'm turning the bin upside down to make sure that I've got the whole rhubarb plant in. Um. There we go, we are done. So the straw acts as insulation. It also helps keep the light out. And yeah. Fingers crossed it works. Ideally, I would have popped this on um, a good couple of weeks ago, but I haven't. So we'll just see um, what happens. So there we are. Hopefully it works. And hopefully that you have found this week's blog interesting. Making rhubarb gin, forcing rhubarb. Who thought that we were going to do that too? Um, and I hope that it's inspired you to um, give rhubarb a go if you haven't. It's so easy. It's really, really easy to keep. We've got lots of rhubarb down in Devon and there's so many different ways you can use it. I love making a rhubarb compote and having it with Greek yogurt and granola for breakfast. It's probably one of my favorite ways to enjoy it. Rhubarb crumble, utterly delicious with custard. So yummy. There are so many different ways. I think I've got a rhubarb frangipanji recipe somewhere so if I have I will link link that um, for you to have a look at but I will see you on Friday with a new vlog in the meantime have a good rest of the week and sending lots of love